Okay, uh, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Bar Shem Shai. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Shai, Bar Shem Rakar Wadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're living in, because this knowledge is indeed a blessing to us. So, I'm going to call this video New Broom Sweeps Clean But the Old Broom Knows the Corner New Broom Sweeps Clean But the Old Broom Knows the Corner Now, that's an old so-called Jamaican proverb and I'm going to explain to you the meaning of it. I remember um, this was when I uh, lived in St. Lucia. I heard that proverb. And I lived in St. Lucia from 1971 to 1977. And I learned a lot of, I learned a lot of things when I lived on that island. That's the island where my parents are from. And I remember the old men, they used to have these sayings, these proverbs, because I used to have, I used to have, um, I used to hang around a lot of old, so-called old people, you know, old men, you know, old women. And... It was like a delight hearing their conversations of things that they went through, things they experienced. And I remember that proverb was very, very uh, popular among the old men. New brooms sweep clean, but the old broom knows the corner. And um, what that means is when you buy a broom, you know, back then, the brooms were made with banana leaves. The brooms that we bought on the island back then, I remember this well. They were made with banana leaves. And uh, when you buy a new broom, it would sweep the house clean, but it wouldn't sweep as good as the older broom that's been in the house for a while and knows every corner of the house. Because you've used it so much. So that's where the saying comes. New broom sweep clean. But the old broom knows the corner. Now what that means. Is a guy that's new to something. He's not as, as experienced. As the older dude that's been in it for a while. He's got more experience. So he's really more valuable. The older guy. Why? Because he has the experience. So in this case, the old broom would be more experienced than the new broom in cleaning the house. Hence the saying, new broom sweep clean, old broom knows the corner. So what does this mean? Meaning, men that's in the truth, the man that's been in the truth for many years should be treasured, he should be valued, he should be honored, he should be respected. Why? For his experience. There's a lot of knowledge you can gain from his experience. And a lot of these young guys in this thing of ours, some of them don't see it that way. All right? They don't give the older men that's been in the knowledge, been in the truth, they don't give them their deserved respect. See? And that's not good. Really, that's a mark of stupidity. Again, if you're a young guy in this truth, in this knowledge, you should treasure the older men in this truth, in this knowledge, because where you trying to go, you as a young man, where you trying to go? Guess what? That man has been there and back 
okay? You got the experience. These younger dudes, they talk all kind of shit about the old men in the faith. But the one thing they can't take from those older men in the faith is their experience. I'll say that again. These younger, younger guys, they talk all kind of shit about the older men in the faith. But the one thing they can't take from them is the experience of being in this knowledge, being in this truth. Like you look at a man like Elder Pastor Hall coming up on 40 years being in this ministry. You know how much experience this man has? Have you ever sat and thought about the experience that he's had been been in this knowledge, been in been in this faith, the uh, adversity that he's faced and came out on the other side? And it filters on down, filters to myself, Elder Apostle Ramnab, and the rest of the men, the elders of Connecticut. You can talk all the shit you want to about us, but the one thing that you can't take from us is our experience, our experiences that we've had in this knowledge and this truth over the years, over the many years. Because I was sitting here meditating on what video can I do to bring forth edification and you know, that's the benefit of living alone. I'm always thinking back on experiences that I've experienced in my life. And the years that I spent down in St. Lucia, they play a very important part in my life. The experiences that I got from there, living there, is a totally different culture. And we're talking about the, the mid-70s, from 1971 to 1977, I lived down there. And I picked up a lot of experiences. So hopefully this benefits you, especially you younger men in the faith. What's the moral? To have respect for the older man in the faith. Have tremendous respect for the older man in the faith. If you want to be one of those older men in the faith one day. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Which we're almost out of here, so... Hopefully we'll be out of here this year, according to the title Elder Apostle Tahar put on the year, the year, the year when the prophecies hopefully will come to pass. Anyway, I got a couple of scriptures for you, you young men. This is to you young men that have sense. Don't be like those young upstarts, right, that have no respect, no respect. And I don't have to tell you who raised them, okay? <laughs> I do not have to tell you who raised those kind of young guys, all right? A sign of manhood as a young man is respecting the older men that deserve respect. There are men in this thing of ours that deserve respect. Deserve respect for their many years of service and for their experience, all right? The experience. Like I said, you young guys, you can talk shit about us all you want to, begin to fell the pasta on down, but one thing you can't take from us, listen good, I want you to listen real freaking good, one thing you can't take from us is the experience. We have the experience, and we're still experiencing. Now, it was Elder Apostle Aramlab, who I first heard define the word experience, which is from the Latin tried out. X means out. Experience means to try. Try out. That's what the word literally means. And when you take that definition back to the analogy of the new broom and the old broom, the old broom has been tried out. That's why it knows every corner of the house. That's why it can sweep the house better than the new broom. The new broom will sweep clean, but the new broom will not sweep as good as the old broom. Because the old broom has been used so many times that it's familiar with the house. It fits in every corner of the house. It can get the dirt in the corner of the house that the new broom can't get. Let me say that again. It can get the dirt in the corner of the house that the new broom cannot get. And I've witnessed that with my own two eyes 
when I lived in St. Lucia, when we used to buy the new broom and we had end up had to throw out the old broom because it became so worn out, you couldn't use it anymore, but you, you end up missing it. You'd be like, man, I wish I had that old broom, but you had to throw it away because it was so worn out. Why? Because the new broom was able to get in them corners, unlike, I'm sorry, the old broom was able to get in those, those corners, unlike the new broom. Okay, the new broom just only swept clean. And the brooms back then, they were made out of banana leaves. Okay? Those of you who live in the islands, you know what I'm talking about. All right? So, that's the moral. You young men, before you start talking shit about the old men in the faith, I want you to meditate on that. I want you to have a think on that. You can talk all the shit you want to about the older men in the faith, but the one thing you can't take from them is the experience that they have. And if, you, if you're wise, if you're smart, you'll shut the fuck up and you'll learn from their experience. I'm sorry I had to talk that way, but I got to drive home the point. You'll shut the hell up and you'll learn from their experience. Some of you young men, you do entirely too much talking. You know, when I first came into knowledge, when I first came to the school, 1 West 125th Street, it took me a while to find my voice. I was too busy listening. What the fuck did I have to say? I had nothing to say. All right? I'm totally inexperienced. I didn't know. I, <laughs> you know, it was a time of listening. Now, through the years, I've gained my voice in this knowledge and this truth. Okay? Based upon my experiences. All right? So this is the book of First uh, Timothy 3 and 6. It says, Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride. And, and, uh, and a lot of you young guys fall under that, fall under that category. And some of you, you're so filled with pride, you end up thinking you know more than the teachers that taught you. <laughs> I mean, it's funny to see, man. This is a this is a complete crackpot generation. All right. At least I came out of a generation where us younger guys, we knew, well, you got to give the older dudes respect. You know. But this generation, man. <laughs> anyway, if you're a young brother that comprehends what I'm saying and, and you applied in your life, kudos to you, man. You miles ahead of most of these young men out here. Okay? Again, 1 Timothy 3 and 6. Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And yeah, fall, end up falling out the truth. Now, when you look up this word novice. Novice. Check this out. A person new to or inexperienced in a field or situation. That's the difference. Going back to the analogy of the brooms, the new broom and the old broom, the old broom is more experienced with cleaning the house. Why? Because it's been used so many times. Think about it. It's been used so many times. It's experienced to clean the house, to give the house a good clean. But the new broom is inexperienced. That's why the new broom cannot sweep as clean as the old broom. But regrettably, you have to get rid of the old broom because it becomes so worn out, you can't use it anymore. All right? The, 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 the banana leaves that I use to clean that broom, eventually they get weak and real frail. All right? So you got to throw it away and buy a new broom. But for a while, you'll be missing the old broom until the new broom breaks in. Then it becomes like the old broom and the cycle is repeated over and over again. I learned that when I was down in St. Lucia. All right. I'm sharing the benefit of that experience with you younger men. Okay. So again, the word novice, a person new to or inexperienced in a field or situation. And the truth is a guy who's a novice new to the faith, he really doesn't have much of a voice, especially when he's around the older men, all right? It's a time for him to do more listening than talking. 
I'm telling you like it is, right? 1 Timothy 3 and 6, not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Now let's get, and I'm about to wrap this video up. I don't have to make this video too long. The point's already been made. Ecclesiasticus, the 32nd chapter, the 7th verse. It says, speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely do you speak when thou art twice asked. So even if an older man asks you to <laughs> ask you to speak your mind, speak your mind. You you you're very reticent. Look that word up with speaking your mind. Because you you're a young man. You don't know too much. You're inexperienced. And an inexperienced man shouldn't be talking as if he's an experienced man. It's not a good look. All right, like the old saying goes, you stay in your lane, you play your position. You're an inexperienced guy. And we're, I'm talking about, of course, in this thing of ours. That's what I'm talking about, this ministry of ours. Okay, even in the world that applies. I mean, what can a five-year-old carpenter tell a 40-year-old carpenter? You know, he's been 40 years in the business, right? Doing the business of carpentry. And you're, you're a five-year-old carpenter, all right? You've been in the business five years. What the hell can you tell a 40-year-old, a 40-year-old uh, cop, um, a 40-year-old carpenter that's been in the business 40 years old? What can you tell him? You can't tell him too much. He has the experience over you. And experience is king, Okay. Experience is king. This thing of ours, experience is king. Okay? So never forget that, young man. Again, Ecclesiastes 32 and 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Let thy speech be short. That's the definition of being reticent, by the way. Let thy speech be short comprehending much in a few words and even as an old man in the faith we, we, i'm still trying to master that to you not to say too much but the little that i do say it have a lot of weight behind it and i noticed that from elder high priest yaikwab i always said that about him elder high priest yaikwab he would sit in the room right his favorite chair was by the by the pillar in the room um, in other words, if you knock down that pillar, the ceiling would come down. So that's kind of spiritual because that shows he was one of the pillars of the school. Okay, there's a scripture where it mentions that. Um, let me see uh, if I type in the word pillar. It should come up. Somewhere in the New Testament. I think it's in Acts. Okay. Uh, it might be pillars. Let me see. If I type in pillars. And then we're going to look up the word. There it is. That's, I thought it was in Acts, but it's actually in Galatians. Galatians. Uh, this is um, the book of Galatians, the second chapter, the ninth verse. And when James, Cephas, and John, now James, <laughs> James uh, was the brother, the brother of, uh, of John, right? James, Cephas, that was Peter, okay, and John, all right? And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, 
Now, this is when um, this is when the Apostle Paul went to Jerusalem three years. If you know the history, three years after he had been converted, he went to Jerusalem and it was over the matter of circumcision. You know, they had a hot debate over that matter. So he went to Jerusalem to straighten out that matter. So this is the event he's talking about here. J um, Galatians, the second chapter, the ninth verse. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen, meaning the Israelite foreigners, and they unto the circumcision, circumcision meaning the Jews. So the point is, they were what? They were pillars in the ministry. Now, Elder High Priest Yaiquab, his chair in the room, and I remember this, his chair was, he rested his chair right on this pillar that was in the room, all right? This pillar, the structure that was in the room that held up the ceiling. Again, if you knock down that pillar, the ceiling most likely would, would have came down. So his chair was right there. And I find that to be spiritual. That shows he was one of the pillars in this thing of ours. Okay. Let's look up this word pillar. Pillar. It says a tall vertical structure of stone. And that's exactly what that thing was made out of. That, that pillar that held up the ceiling. It looked, it looked like a, a, if I remember correctly, it looked like your basic column that, that holds up the ceiling. Like a Romanesque type column. Right? If I remember correctly, a tall vertical structure of stone, wood, or metal used as a support for a building or an ornament or a monument, in this case a ceiling, and that was right in the room. It was a little room, but that's what I noticed, all right, Elder Yaiquab's chair was right there, and the point is, Elder Yaiquab when you know you had the other teachers because he'd be in the room and you had the other teachers teaching and he wouldn't say much but whenever he did speak whatever he said it had a lot of weight to it and he was speaking based upon experience he was the one who said we had to learn wickedness in order to appreciate righteousness you know how profound that is let me say that again that's for you younger guys it was Elder High Priest Yaiquab that said we had to learn wickedness in order to appreciate righteousness. And let me tell you, this man's classes was 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 a joy to behold, man. All right, we're talking about Elder High Priest Yaiquab, the father of Elder High Priest Arya. Okay. So, what I noticed from him too was, you know, you make up observations. I made the observation that he he rarely talked, Elder High Priest Yaiqua, but when he did say something, it was profound. It was it had a lot of weight to it. So going back to Ecclesiasticus thirty two and eight, it says, "Let thy speech be short, comprehending much, understanding much in a few words," and it was Elder. Uh, High Priest Masha, also known as King Masha, he would always say, one word, one word. Meaning when you explaining something, you try to use as few words as possible because inherently our people, they have a, 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 a short attention span. They have a short attention span. And this is something I'm still trying to master. When you're explaining something to them, no matter how deep the subject is, you try to use as few words as possible. In other words, you try to get to the point. All right? Because our people, they have a, they're very impatient and they have a short attention span. All right? So we can all learn from the scripture, not just the young, the young man. We can all learn from this. Ecclesiastes 32 and 8. Let thy speech be short, comprehending much in a few words. 
be as one that knoweth. Now, this is to you young men. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. Another thing, too, when you're a young man, if an, if you hear an older man, an elder pastor, he's done that many times. And, you know, he'll, he'll make a statement. And within you, you might want to match the statement with your experience. Sometimes you don't have no experience to match it. But you want to match it. Don't do it. You don't say nothing. It's not every time like Elder Pastor when he says something. It's not every time I or Elder Apostle or Ram Lab or any have to match his experience. You know? It's just not a good look. It's just not a good look. Even if, let's say, Elder Pastor says something and you've experienced it. Even if you have experienced it, you don't say nothing, man. You just be quiet, okay? Because it's not a good look to match this man's experience, okay? As if, you know, <laughs> it's a sign of respect, okay? This is, this is a lost art in this thing of ours, man, all right? It's, it's not everything that an older man says that even if you've experienced it, you have to bring in your two cents. It's, it, it, it's just not a good look. Okay? It's just not a good look. And I see guys doing that. You know, if one guy says something and he has the most experience and he says something, here comes the younger guy. He got to match him. Not a good look, man. Not a good look. All right? Like it says here, let thy speech be short, comprehending much in a few words. Be as, do be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. And that's, that's you, you talk about self-control, you talk about wisdom. Psh, you get, you get as a young man, you, you practice that, you get mad respect from the older man. They marvel at that. They say, yeah, this guy's well-behaved, well-mannered, well-behaved. These are things that we've lost in this generation, man, that we have to get back. You know, a certain way of acting, a certain way of thinking, behaving. You know, King David said, I will behave myself wisely in the house of the Lord. That's what King David said. We got we to gotta get that, at, that art back, man, the art of behaving wisely. We got to get that back, okay? We're not niggas, man. We're not degenerates. We're not monkeys swinging from tree to tree, man. We're Hebrew Israelites, man. And we're supposed to have the highest class possible. We're supposed to be the most well-manneredly, well-manneredly, if, if I'm saying the word right. You get the idea. That's how we're supposed to behave. We're supposed to behave as children of Yahweh Hashem Shai, man. With the greatest manners. Okay? Anyway, reading on, it says, if thou, again, this is directed to the, to the young man, if thou be among great men, or older men, older men that's been in the faith, and that's still in the faith doing the work, if you be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. That goes back to the point I was making. Check that out. That goes back to the point that I was making. If the older man shares his experience with you, even though you may have experienced what he experienced, you as a younger man, you don't add to it. You don't try to match the older man's experience as a younger man. That's just not a good look. That's just not a good look. Okay? <laughs> if thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in the place, use, me, use not many words. There have been a few times Elder Pastor has said something of his experience. And I may have experienced it, but I keep my mouth shut because I'm not trying to match the man. All right. I'm not trying to match. Why? Because he taught me. I didn't teach him. He taught me. And it's a sign of respect. That's something you young guys need to learn. Okay. It's a sign of respect. Okay. This is a thing that never goes out of style. Respect for the older man that's in the profession that you're in. And a lot of you young guys, you don't show that. A lot of you, you young guys, you act like you've been raised by wolves in the jungle, man. You have no manners. You have no respect. There's a way of acting, man. 
is a way of carrying yourself. Okay? The scriptures say to examine ourselves. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. And trust not that we're reprobates. Trust not that we're that we're reprobates. Alright? To examine ourselves. Okay? So pretty much that's it. I, I think I've said enough. Hopefully, uh, you young men, especially, I mean, the lesson was for all of us, including myself, because I'm saying it, but hopefully you young men especially will take heed and work on yourself, okay? These are some of the things you can incorporate in your, you know, in your character, being in this, being in this knowledge, being in this truth. So with that, on to the next one.